This is lecture 19 of CS 147 computer architecture study. In this lecture, we'll be concentrating on two topics. Uh, one will review the memory hierarchy and then we'll start and touch upon a topic called cache memory and we'll continue with this cache memory study in next two lectures. Okay. So before we start uh, the slides, let me show you this system picture in, in to, to put things in perspective. So what we are dealing with here, the whole computing system has two major parts. One micro is microprocessor and other is the memory. So on board, there is one chip you can imagine. It is a microprocessor chip, which is connected through that motherboard connection through a memory to the memory card. So the diagram we are showing here is purely a pictorial depiction from the microprocessor perspective means how microprocessor perceives or see the memory system. To a microprocessor, it is simply a system which stores information and information can be retrieved from that by means of a specific address. So it issues an address, 32-bit address for 32-bit system, and then it sends a control re or request to this system for read and write like there can be different mechanism can be a separate signal one for read another for write and so on and so forth that, let's not go into the detail but some control signal which controls the operations in the memory for reading or writing that information into the memory or retrieving it from the memory and then it has some 32 bits of line uh, information line information channel or electrically it is the electrical connection to retrieve the data from the memory or sense the data to the memory to write. So that's all is a memory from microprocessor perspective. So microprocessor sees that, okay, this is a device or mechanism to which it can, it can specify an address and it can specify some control, read or write, and it, will, it can send a data to write something into the memory or it gets back data from the memory, right? So we so far dealt with microprocessor, right? We talked in detail about the register file, control unit, ALU, how they work, how they uh, fit together, uh, etc., etc. What is the application of the clocks? All the details, and from there we talked about how we can improve the performance of the microprocessor various to various techniques like pipelining, uh, like uh, vector processing architecture like like multi-core architecture and so on and so forth so this part is okay now the other part this memory part is it as simple as that that uh, it looks like is it just the device we are looking at i would say no this is again as an it is an representation of the perspective of the microprocessor this microprocessor perspective sees a memory like this simple device. We'll see in this module throughout these next three, four lectures that it is not in reality as what microprocessor thinks. So we create illusion to microprocessor to have an appearance like this as this picture that is a simple device with address data and memory and control signal but inside we implement it for increased efficiency okay we implement some complex structure inside it for increased efficiency so with that perspective let's first review different type of memories in their and their hierarchies and relative characteristics so there are many type of storage and memories available in the market in many, many form. Okay. So we can start with some simple like this. So maybe if you do not recognize, this is an hard disk that goes into your, your desktop or laptop, especially older laptop, newer laptop has others, other technology, but this is a magnetic hard disk we say uh, as part. But in general, hard disk is one storage. 
uh, this is like a CD-ROM uh, type of storage that we can write for some writable uh, raw uh, CD. Uh, and then of course, most of the time we read information from here. Uh, then we have the memory card, which is the like goes onto the main motherboard where this is what we are we see as a specification okay this laptop is four gigabyte memory or this laptop has eight gigabyte of memory and you can let's say it in specification is also say okay you can extend it up to 16 gigabyte of memory in the in this computer so what does it mean really so motherboard has some slots where you can insert this kind of components and increase the memory capacity so if there are spare slot available, let's say some computer says that I have 8 GB of memory, but I can extend till 16 GB. This means that you can insert some new memory device collection through some memory card into the slot and you increase the memory. Then this one is we don't use anymore, but it's kind of an has an historical impact like when I started handling computers like in 80s, we this is a big deal. This is called floppy disk. Uh, no more exists, no more. I have some copy, personal copy in, uh, in my possession. I don't think I have a driver for it, but at least just for as a memory, I kept them. Uh, but, but this was like, one time it was really, really hot technology in the market where basically this is kind of a removable storage and that's all it available at that time. No, not all, exactly that's all. I, I will show you another tip. Okay, this is another uh, medium, like it can be an audio cassette or, or a video, uh, it's called a VCR. So many of you probably don't know, some of you maybe have seen this in your maybe you have something inherited from your grandparent uh, era or your grandparent has that in this in, in their home maybe okay i have some copies like that in my home as well uh, uh, again just for memory you know like in me uh, like like keeping memory purpose like not i don't have a vcr or any recording device as such in 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 uh, in my home but to note, this tape is actually widely used. It's not a, it not for the VCR purpose or video watching purpose, but for the data storage purpose, the tape is still used till date. Okay, you may know it, may not know it. I will explain it later. Okay, why tape is in use? Uh, Lure, latest technology, everyone knows. Uh, audio tape, as I said, this is a big one. Is the video tape? This is the audio tape. Audio tape was used to used as a as a storage as well, uh, especially in conjunction with the floppy disk. Uh, well, I, I have seen systems which supports both floppy disk and uh, recording device on the on the tape machine, like audio tape. And uh, that, uh, if you know, like an I don't know whether you have came across this device or not. This is like an audio tape drive, audio tape player. Um, maybe some of you have seen it in an old car system or maybe in, in some grandparent home again, again, grandparent home. Uh, it's a old, old technology, okay? So if like some system has this audio recording capability as well on, on the audio tip and such system can be could be integrated or could be connected to those those computing system which supports audio tape and store and restore data instead of audio store and restore data from the audio tape again ancient history then something like zip drive came ac along uh, this is to counter uh, kind of uh, it's a trial of reviving the floppy disk market but it didn't fly. It didn't fly because uh, like during the same similar time period, another technology came in which took uh, took over the market this is the flash memory market like an SD card, like SD micro SD card. You can 
get it like a gigabyte range i don't know if it is there is a terabyte micro sd card or sd card uh, but yeah there can be i don't know like their technology is, is evolving in days uh, so since they are very small footprint you need very low power driver and stuff like that it's, it i to me that kills the zip drive market basically um then you all know usb card that's also one type of flash memory technology but it doesn't your computer doesn't need to have a special support for reading the sd card or xd card or things like that but you can just stick it into the usb port and there you go it just have a new memory there okay and then of course good old uh, eprom uh like this is a programmable erasable programmable memory uh, which basically serves as an essential part of a computing system especially during the boot boot process but modern computer doesn't have eprom uh, it mostly has the eprom electrically erasable programmable read only memory or some sort of flash memory uh, built in so this is the part where an fixed program boot up program uh, like start of the boot up program is stored here and and when computers power up that program being executed and it it basically then start calling um the loading program from the disk okay so so this one if you look at see there is a quartz window there on on a chip you probably find it in very old oldest computer that's an eprom erasable programmable read only memory the technology is that you can electrically write something onto the memory of course for limited number of time maybe 10 15 times you can you can erase and and write it back uh erasing method was is very interesting like you need to place this chip practically under ultraviolet ray so there is a separate instrument was available to erase the uh, eprom kind of chip and what you need to do you need to place it inside uh, that ultraviolet ray chamber and expose this chip on ultraviolet ray for a certain amount of time like 15 minutes half an hour and then the content is gone and you can reprogram it for the new purpose but again reprogramming has and its own capability what happened like uh, it kind of start decaying the material with overexposing on the ultraviolet ray but anyway modern computer doesn't have it now with all this different uh, various type of the memories which possibly some of them are still are used relevant is is your memory chip ram random access memory uh, hard drive especially very cheap low end laptop which which you'll probably get about 200 300 bucks its capacity wise and performance what is it, it it will be almost as good as the high-end computing like 800 900 bucks laptop but difference is this those low-end model most of them uses this uh, magnetic disk hard drive which little bit slower at the boot booting time maybe if you look run games you will see some performance degradation uh, but day-to-day -day work it can you can you can live through uh, where the high-end computer laptops like 800 or thousand bucks that around that what will you'll get is a solid state hard drive they say what they deploy again in that type of hard drive it deploy the flash memory technique for for storing information and it can integrate as in, into the whole system as a as a hard drive okay so solid state hard drive is better in performance and of course it's pricier but again till that you can find out laptops or desktop with an rotating magnetic hard disk in it so this is still relevant uh, of course your cd rom and blu rays are still in use in the market uh, flash drives or yes usb drives and flash drive they're relevant and tip i'll say I, i'll explain why this is relevant you may not uh, came across this thing uh, so far but i'll explain what why we need to use the tape drive 